I have no information on the author of today's book, Joanne Dame, or if that was even her real name. She was apparently Welsh, but that's about all I know. Prince Madoc, Discoverer of America, was the only book she seems to have published, and the exact date of its publication seems uncertain, with figures given between 1901, 1909, and 1913. The book is based on a Welsh folk story of how a Welsh prince sailed to America a few hundred years before Columbus. The author mentions in support the anecdote of the Native American Madagwis slash Doags, which were said to have a fair complexion and a language akin to Welsh, along the debunked hoax. The story begins at the castle of Aberfraw, with King Orvain of Gwynedd returning from the hunt to see his newborn son, but he disowns him due to his clubbed foot, as any deformation, even a scar, disqualifies a prince from ruling under Welsh law, and wants to have him drowned. But his wife Brenda forces him to let her have the boy baptised. But Brenda has her old nurse Hunid hide away the child and present the king with a dead one taken from the slums. She tends the child for five years, but when she's at Dev's door, she reveals his identity to the boy's grandfather and has the boy taken to Mont Old Bard Penderen. Some time later, the queen is riding on a horse, hawking, when by chance she meets Madoc, yet only realizes who he is when he tells her that his nanny Hunid died a month ago. She comes to see him often, but the king's former and future mistress accuses her of paganism, and the king says he will have her burned at the stake if she ever goes to the druid again. The druid, sensing his death, tells Madoc of the great scheme he has spent 50 years working on and has yet to achieve, to find the ancient homeland of humanity in the west over the great ocean, giving to Madoc the golden rings that came to Penderen from across the far ocean on a sad, distant day, setting Penderon upon the path of hoping to find a ship at every court, leading to a life of disappointment. As Mudder grows older, he is taught the secrets of Druidic lore, until when he is fourteen when he guides Penderon to a bardic festival to take place over forty days at Aberfraw. Madoc himself wins the laurel wreath for best minstrel at Aberfraw, and his song greatly touches the Queen's heart, but when he comes to sing to her, the king thinks he is her lover and he has to flee. He finds asylum with the Hospitalers, though he finds their religion confusing and silly, and after staying with them for a while, hiding from Orvain's wrath, he goes travelling abroad, visiting the Holy Land, before he goes to Orvain's court as a minstrel many years later, with the intent of ingratiating himself to seek a fleet to fulfil Penderin's project. Orvain, now at death's door, is made to acknowledge him as his son before he dies, despite the machinations of his second wife, who wishes her own son to be king. This results in a civil war for rulership of Gwynedd, and Madoc being hemmed in on his island fortress of Mon. After a series of bloody battles, loss, grief and mourning, Madoc and his 300 followers set off in 10 ships, along with aged Penderon, to find his land in the west, never to see Wales again their story preserved and discovered in a most unusual manner. The story is melancholic and bloody with many moody turns, which is what makes it good. The one negative is that getting to America takes until page 188. The author, despite not having written anything else it seems, avoids the common pitfalls of a novice writer, and it is sad she did not write anything else.